In this Revit tutorial, I'm going to cover the basics of putting walls into your project. We're going to find the wall tool on the architecture tab right underneath the word. So it's basically the first option uh, right next to the modify tool. If we click on the split button, you'll see that there are actually a few different types of walls that you can put in your project. The first type is architectural. These can be interior, exterior walls. We have structural, that would actually be, of course, structural walls that would go into the load-bearing um, analyzing part. Uh, we have walls by face, which you can use um, if you had uh, conceptual masses or things like that. You can get more unique wall shapes off of those structures. And then below you'll see that you have wall sweeps and reveals. Um, they're currently grayed out because we don't have any walls in the project, but once you had some walls, you'd be able to either add sweeps on top of them or cut reveals into them. For this, I'm actually going to use uh, the architectural wall, the top one. So I'm going to click on that. Oh, wants me to save the project, I'll go ahead. Okay, so with um, putting in a wall, you'll see that once I click that option, uh, I get a green contextual tab that says Place Wall. So basically, whenever you click any tool in Revit, you're going to get a green contextual tab that has something to do with what you're trying to accomplish. Under this tab, we have the Draw Panel, um, and this actually has quite a few options in here, and this is all about the, the shape of the wall you're trying to create. So we have everything from straight lines, rectangles, uh, inscribed and circumscribed polygons, circles, a variety of different arcs. We can also pick lines of things that already exist, which I don't currently have in this project. And we can even pick faces of um, objects to create walls from. So there's really a lot of options there. Down below that, we have the contextual ribbon that's above our drawing space, and this is very important as well. Uh, we can determine how tall the walls are and if they're connected to various levels or not. By default, the walls come in unconnected, so they're not concerned about any particular level or height or anything like that, and they come in at a generic 20 feet. They're also going to be located by the center of the wall, they're going to be chained, which means they'll be connecting one to the next to the next. There's no offset and no radius currently. So for the first walls that I put in, I'm going to put it in just with these generic default settings. And I'm also going to use just the line tool. So with that, if I come down to my drawing area, I'm going to stay within my elevation markers right now. If I simply click and then move my mouse, you'll see that you get a rubber banding effect. So um, it will be as long or as short and at whatever angle um, I'm at when I, when I click my mouse again. You'll see that Revit is always trying to help you and you know, for most buildings the walls are straight at 90 degree angles and things like that. So it really does want to help you snap to those 90 degree angle points. You'll also see that it's telling you how long the wall is. So if you want to be careful, you know, if you wanted to make sure this was at, um, you know, 100 feet or something like that, you could kind of watch it and when you get there, click. But remember that Revit's really flexible and it's easy to make those modifications when you're done. So really the way to work in Revit is to mostly just rough in the shape that you want and then come back and actually adjust it later. Now as I made my way around, and just clicked where I wanted the walls to begin and end, you'll see that uh, it does a really nice job of cleaning up those corners for you. So it's not like you have to come back in and um, you know adjust or trim or do that sort of thing. Uh, unless there's something um, unique that you're trying to do, Revit does a really nice job of cleaning that up for you and letting you just keep going. If I decided that I'm done making walls, I can either hit escape twice or come over to the left on my ribbon and click the modify tool. That gets you out of that green contextual ribbon and lets you move forward. Okay, so now you'll see that you have um, you know, created some basic walls going around the perimeter of you know, what would be my building. If I come in and either hover on or click on one of these walls to find out more about it, you'll see that in the properties palette what I put in was a basic wall generic 8 inch. That's what it comes in as by default, so if you don't change it, if you just start clicking and putting in walls, that's what you're going to get. Um, that's not a problem because if we want to go in and change them to something else later, we can just select them and then uh, select the wall that we want to change it to, so it's real simple. 
if we want to put in walls a different way, uh, if I go back to the architecture tab and wall, you'll see that line is one option, but we can also put them in as rectangles, circles, and so on. So um, it's not as if you're just stuck in one way. So if I wanted to put in a rectangle, for example, I can just click the first point, the second point, and it really ends that that space, that room, or that building for me. Um, I can put in circles and all sorts of things. So you can really combine and um, you know create a lot of unique shapes with all these different tools. I'd like you to notice when I put in the circle here, if I either hover or click on it, you'll see that the circle's actually already divided into two arcs. I suppose it's not very common to have just a perfectly circular building unless you're making a silo or something. So you can always come in and then maybe delete half of that and you'll have a perfect half circle arc. So there's really a lot of uh, flexibility there. As we're drawing the walls, uh, you'll see that there are a few other options in the contextual bar that we should take a look at. So if I go back to the walls tool, and take a look down here. You'll see that, for example, we can offset or add a radius. So let's say I wanted to do uh, an offset. I'll offset five feet. And that means it will offset exactly five feet from whatever line that I choose to draw or select. So this would be a good example for using the uh, pick lines tool. So if I have an offset of five feet, and then I come down here and I pick a line, perhaps the exterior line of my wall. You'll see that Revit is giving you that dotted line. So we'll actually create a wall five feet from the line that I picked. That works out really nicely. So if you're trying to uh, make a border that's going all the way around, you'll see how it even connects the corners for you. So that's using an offset. Now if I go back up here to the Modify Place Wall, maybe I'll change my offset back to zero, and maybe I'll pick a line again so I can just draw with a line. I could also draw with a radius. So right now I get these nice, crisp, 90 degree corners, but if I drew a radius, let's say of maybe five feet again, and then I'll just sort of move off to the side. If I start drawing walls, if I make a corner, it will automatically put that curve in. So that's a radius of five feet. So there's you know no need to go in and use maybe the fillet commands like you would use in um, AutoCAD or something like that. It actually does that for you. As I mentioned before, when we're putting in walls, let's pick a wall again. We also have the option of changing the height. So by default, the walls are coming in unconnected and at 20 feet tall. Um, right now, I'm not going to worry about the constraints, but I could just by default change the height of the wall. So if I knew that I wanted these to be 12 feet, for example, I can simply change the measurement there, come in, draw a wall, and um, it will be at 12 feet instead of 20. Now when I click here, you'll see that I'm getting nice 90 degree angles again, and that's because I unchecked the radius. So these are all things that you have to kind of watch for to make sure your walls are going in the way you want them to so you're not surprised. Currently, we've only been looking at our walls from the plan view, so I'm on the level one floor plan view. If I were to switch to a elevation view, you could see what they actually look like um, from the side. So I'm just going to go to my project browser and scroll down, and I'm going to go to my east elevation view. And here we can see actually, you know, what our, our walls look like from the side. So all of the initial walls that I put in are right here. So these are all 20 feet tall. And then here is the one that I put in at 12 feet tall. So as they are now, all of these walls are unconnected. So if I click on one of them and look at the properties palette, you'll see that uh, if I make my way down to right here, it says top constraint unconnected. 
The base constraint says level one. So these walls were inserted at level one and they're automatically constrained. So basically think of them as being constrained to the floor. So if we move the floor up or down, the wall will go with it. However, the top is not. If I were to change that, or if I had changed that um, initially when I put them in, these levels would start helping me out. And this is a really good idea and a good way to work. So let's say, for example, with um, maybe this wall that I have selected right here, if I say, you know, I don't want it unconstrained, I want it connected up to level two, I can either hit apply now or just move my mouse out and that wall has now moved down so that it's in line with level two. Well, that's really handy because if at some point during the course of the project you decide that you don't want level two to be at 10 feet, but you maybe want it to be at 15 or something like that, everything that's connected to that level will then move up or down accordingly. So if I click in my level where it says 10 feet and I'll change that to 15, you'll see that that wall moved up and now this wall is 15 feet tall because it's connected to level two. So that's extremely useful. If I were to connect this wall up to level three, now this wall is constrained to level three. And should I decide to move level three up or down, the wall goes accordingly. So using those constraints can be incredibly useful. Um, and that's just a brief uh, introduction into how that works, but why that's so important.